It's all yours, Mikey. And Pastor, I think uh, what we're seeing in Jesse is a microcosm of what God wants to do in this entire generation. You know, I, Jesse and I talk often, and I think back in my life, and uh, like you said, I had parents who loved Jesus with, with all their hearts, and I went through about a three or four year period where I left God. And um, I was just asked before I came out here what I was gonna talk about. And my, my answer was pretty clear, Jesus. I don't think there's anything else right. that we know to talk about. Why did you walk away? Well, let me start by, let me, let me answer that by first saying I had wonderful parents. It was not their fault. I made a wrong decision uh, to go to the wrong university. It was the one decision that I have to admit that my parents, you know, in the home I grew up in, it wasn't a democracy. You did what my mom and dad wanted, right. and that was really it. There were no choices. We didn't vote. There was no time out. It, it just didn't work that way. But they gave me liberty to make one decision. And uh, I was offered a, a scholarship to ORU and, and, and rejected it and went to the wrong school. And uh, when I left the will of God, his covering lifted to a certain degree. And I found the wrong people. And when you find the wrong people, it will undoubtedly affect your walk with God. It affected Solomon's walk with God when sure he married did. the wrong wives. So it will definitely affect any child's walk with God, and it affected it. I preached my first sermon at 16. And when I left the will of God, I didn't preach again until I was 27. It took me 11 years to find the gift of God that, that, that came upon me when I was 12. So that's why I walked away. And, um, but I thank God that Jesus took me back. How did you come back? I hit rock bottom, like Jesse did. I had a moment walking down the road. I looked up at the Lord and I began to weep because there was a sense of breaking his heart. I saw how badly I hurt him. And I don't think many people know or understand that sensitive side of Jesus, that vulnerable side that humble side. You know, the scripture says that he knocks on the door of our heart. The scripture says in the Song of Solomon that my locks are wet with the dew of night. To think that the Lord would stand outside long enough so that his hair would become damp at night so that we'd finally answer. And when he became real to me, when that became real to me, I began to cry at night to think that I'd broken his heart. And then I came to help you in the ministry and it changed me forever. And it's been five years now that uh, I've been serving the Lord. I want you to talk to the people. Talk to that somebody listening, please. You know, I don't know uh, what you're facing today. It's very important you understand that Jesus is real. He's so real that He desires to make Himself known to you right now at this very moment. The tomb is empty. It's empty. And Jesus told His disciples, He says, I'm going away. I'm going to go away, but it's okay. I'm not going to leave you an orphan. I'm sending someone who will take care of you. In our church, we've been discussing the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Right now where you're sitting as you're watching this program, the presence of the Holy Spirit can change you forever. You only need to acknowledge Him and ask Him to make Himself known. If you're searching, if you're searching for meaning, if you're searching for life, if your sin has stained you and you feel like you can't approach God, there's one answer. and His name is Jesus. And Jesus said, if you let me in, I'll come in and dine with you. And trust me when I tell you, when He comes in, He will change your life and you'll oh, never man. be the same. Keep talking, baby. 
Keep talking to the people, please. This is very anointed. My wife and I, I'm 30, and she's 25. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're seeing here, like I said earlier, is a microcosm of what God desires to do with young people. You know, I watch my father-in-law's crusades, the, the youth services. He doesn't dress hip, he dresses nice, but not super hip. Our songs remain the same, yet the kids pack the auditoriums. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're wondering, what do I need to do to reach that generation? It's quite simple. The power of the Holy Spirit again. The menu has not changed, and it never will change. And how we've attempted to cover up our inadequacies with media, with lights, with smoke, with screens, with the way we dress, yet our people leave unsaved, our people leave sick, our people leave controlled by Satan. I'm here to tell you, from the moment the power of God fell on the apostles on the day of Pentecost till the moment Jesus takes us home, it will require the power of the Holy Ghost to do God's oh, work. Man. And I pray with all my heart that the power of the Holy Spirit come back to our churches so that what God did in us, He'll do for you. Why don't you pray right now? Father. Pray for the people, both, both of you. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Your word says that after the Holy Spirit has come upon us, we'd receive a power. And we pray now for our churches across America and across the world. Lord, your word has not changed. There's nothing impossible for you. There's nothing too great for you, Lord. I pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every name, that you would release the power of the Holy Ghost upon every church and every person, every pastor who's Amen. watching this show right now. Lord, to do the work of the ministry without your anointing, it's impossible. So Jesus, take us back. Give us a message so old that it sounds new again, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah. Ah, this is so precious, so anointed. And sitting here listening, holding back the tears. It's precious.